Hello everyone, greetings to you today. We praise God, how are you doing, sir? Good to see you. Uh, we, are, we are embarking on such a mighty time of the move of the spirit for God supplying you more of his grace, his graciousness, his glory, his mighty power. In Psalm 84, it said that I will give you grace and glory and no good thing will I withhold from those that walk uprightly. So God used two materials, grace and glory. So grace and glory has different functionalities. Because if he giving you grace and glory, there is something that grace is incomplete without the glory. Mm. So there is something about grace that you must catch that is more so in the activator's power. Mm -hmm. That's why I said he give more grace to the humble. See, the humble person is activating uh, a greater supply of the grace. But the glory... Yes, it's the manifest presence of God. We know that, all that stuff that you know. But if we want to go into the depth of the glory, it is a reward for using the grace. Mm. Dang. Mm. That's something to think about, right? Mm. Because God is really saying you use the grace correctly. So now the glory is going to correspond to make something happen that is promised for whosoever would use that grace. So Psalm 84 is really a portal popper. It's a portal popper because God's saying, I'm going to take your decision to use the grace and I'm going to reward it by giving it glory. And see, the glory is God taking all of the achievements and all of the heights of his person, his place, his provision, and he's saying, now I'm going to drop that on you. Mm -hmm. So I said, no good thing will he withhold from those that walk uprightly. <clears throat> so he's saying, I'm not going to withhold any part of my achievement from you. I'm going to let you achieve it too. Mm. Mm. So with this mindset, how could you ever be depressed or discouraged? Because the one that has achieved all things, made all things, possessed all things, is saying, I'm going to make you a possessor too if you could obtain the usage of my grace. And if you walk in this grace, I'm going to shower this decision you made with giving you the type of conditions that I abide in eternally. Now, what did Jesus say? That kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So even King Jesus was saying, the father does not want to remain separated in conditions. The father wants to press an elevator down for that condition to be dropped on your condition on earth. There was a story in the word of God where the, the sons of the prophet came to Elisha and said, the place that we are are too small. It's too small. And the reason why the sons of the prophet did that because harvest glory had sat on their soul. Mm. Mm. They said the, mm. <laughs> the, the place that we are is too small. Mm. You can't say that unless your mind has comprehended the mentality of God towards you and how he wants to expand you and enlarge your territory. And now your, your, your verbal release is linked up with the revelation he wants me to have more. 
Wow. Now watch this. They came to the prophet because they even had a revelation that my next place of abundance is profit activated. Mm -hmm. I could look at the prophet to indicate whether or not this will be established or will be uprooted, whether it will be finalized or whether it be a war. I could look at the prophet to get my answer on this abundance that I'm sensing. So watch this here. When the Holy Ghost is ready to release money cometh and abundance, he uses the mouth of the apostle, the mouth of the prophet. And remember, an apostle is really a prophet that was promoted. That every There's not one apostle that you'll ever meet that's not a prophet. Not one. Because apostleship is the father saying, you took the grace of a prophet. And you mastered it well. So now I'm going to pitch you number one. God starts everybody off at number two. Mm. Apostle Paul is Apostle Paul, but God is going to send him to people with a message, the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. So a prophet, you see? Mm -hmm. Jesus called them the 12 apostles, right? But he tests them as prophets. He says, you go to the village. If the house don't receive you, dust your feet off. If they don't give you peace. And then he, he, he talked about a prophet is without honor in his own country. He's dealing with them first and testing them as prophets. So we don't really see the true apostleship manifest until the book of Acts. Because once they challenged, they were challenged as prophets and they succeeded. Now apostles is what is being brought forth in their fruitfulness. For you to live in the kingdom economy, you need an apostle. You, the prophet can't bring you there. Because an apostle is an advanced prophet. And an advanced prophet not going to turn away from the message even when people reproach it. When people fight against it. See, an apostle is stubborn in the righteousness of God. Uh, if you take a note, write that down. An apostle is stubborn in the kingdom system. So, so even, if, even if five people rise up and say, hey, I'm a bishop. I don't like it. This is not of God. The apostle going to go forth. And see, the apostle got enough angel armies to sustain his mental environment while he going forth. You caught that, son? Yes. The apostle got enough angel armies to sustain his mental environment, his mental environment while he going forth. So his sanity not being affected. Mm -hmm. wow. Apostle Paul casted out the devil out of the girl that had the spirit of divination. But what we want to catch is the Bible said that he had walked that same path for days. Mm. So, so he wasn't being affected by her mockery. Yes, he cast it out, but there came a time where he got frustrated. But what was keeping his mental sanity? Hmm. The apostle is surrounded by angel armies. Hmm. Remember I told you, son, that there's angels going back with you from me, but it's not going to affect me none when you go back. Because right. I got enough angels to keep me on top and make you on top. When you have an apostle, you borrow the apostle's angels to come up where the apostle is. Mm, 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 mm. You borrow the apostle's angels. That's why their testimony becomes yours. Their life becomes yours. Their achievements become yours. Their rank becomes yours because you borrow Elijah, when he gave Elisha his spirit, his mantle, it wasn't just, I decree this on you. It was, there's invisible people now moving with you. Mm -hmm. 
So when he said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? The angel said, this is our cue to go in. See, when we deal with the financial realm, when we say money cometh, the minister of finances said, that's my cue to come in. Mm -hmm. The prosperity angels say, that's my cue to come in. Because the, ver the verbal release, when you say it, you're signaling to them, okay, now you have permitted a path for us to go forth and minister in this great way according to your word. Now you know why Jesus would tell people, according to your faith, be it unto you. What Jesus was really saying, and I never heard this before. Jesus was saying, according to your level of receiving my word, I'm going to let you borrow my angels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that, 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 you ever heard that before? Uh, according to you receiving and believing my word, I let you borrow my ministering spirit. Saints, everybody that got healed in the Bible had an angel of healing right beside them that they couldn't see. So when there was 10 lepers, those other 10 lepers, they betrayed their angel. The one leper came back and was guided by that angel. Because the angels that come from your man of God always guide you back to him. Guide you back to his broadcast. Guide you back to his teaching. Guide you back to sowing into him. Guide you back into protecting him, defending him, respecting him, pleasuring him, being submissive to him. The angels of Jesus had came into the life of those 10 lepers. And all nine of them rejected the ministry of those angels. Only one. Let that angel come and talk and minister and work. And it led him right back to Jesus. He said, I'll follow you. I'm here for you, Lord. Because that's what the angelic ministry, they love righteousness. They love purity. They love faithfulness. They love uh, genuine godliness. And they always lead you back to their overseer. Saints, Many people can't interpret what happens in the ministry. Why do people become faithful to the man of God? Because the man of God gave them his angels. Mm -hmm. There's people, I never told them to change their name to Holmes. Mm -hmm. My angels told them to change their names to Holmes. I never verbally told them, you know, you should change your name to Holmes. My angels whisper things and always guide them back to me. Now, you know why the angel will even tell them to change their name to Holmes? Because the last name that they had, then they accomplished nothing. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> well, duh. What's so hard about that? <laughs> mm. The last name didn't even accomplish nothing. Mm. You see what I'm saying? The last name lost to the satanic altar. You think it's strange that God will give you a new name? Didn't he call Jacob Israel? No, no, no. There was already Israel. How could you call him Israel? Uh, because Israel represents favor. Jacob has a stain of certain things. God's saying, I'm going to give you the name that carries favor, not the stain. <laughs> so God changed Jacob's draw. <laughs> that that's 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 he 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 washed and dried him. That's why he had that one because it's stinking to me. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> you you gotta say that again, sir. That's that's he had that lip because he had the stanky leg. He had the lip because he had the stanky <laughs> leg. That is something. Mm. 
The apostle gives you his angels. So watch this here. Peter had given Ananias his angels. So Ananias had the um, empowerment of sowing and reaping in his environment. But he rejected their ministry and tapped into another ministry of fallen angels. So if we look at the deep result of this, why did Ananias die? Because the spirits he listened to were dead. Mm. So he only could become what they were. So when Ananias drops dead, that's what happened to the fallen angel. They dropped from heaven mm. dead. They was cast down to the earth, dead, dropped. And they are, the, they are the dead. They represent death. So Ananias, when he listens to them, he only can become what they are. Mm. You become what you correspond with. Whoever voice you obey, you become. So watch this. Sapphire also rejects the angels of Peter. See, Peter's angels would not have Ananias or Sapphire lie to him. That's why you never lie to a man of God, because that means that fallen angels are now your voice. Never, even if it makes you look bad, if the man of God said, uh, did you just go to that, uh, that uh, hookah bar? Don't say, uh, no, I didn't go. The minute that you say that in that one moment, you have just let fallen angels become the Lord of your life. And you cultivate a future to become what they are, which is dead. So Sophia drops dead because she becomes what she's listening to. A fallen angel that dropped from heaven was cast down and they represent the dead. So she drops dead. Now watch this. If Ananias listens to Peter, he multiplies. You know why? Because Peter is multiplication. Mm. If he listened to Peter, he har harvests because Peter is a lord of the harvest. Mm. Mm. So Peter had dispersed his angels in Ananias and Sapphira life. So now you know why the church even came and started laying down their money at the apostles' feet because the apostle had gave them their angels. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. And when the angels come into your life, they speak to you about honor and they also speak to you about being honored. Mm -hmm. They speak to you about honor because this is where you activate it. But they speak to you about being honored because they, they are there to cause you to dream about what's coming to you. Not for you to honor is what's coming from you. But for you to be honored, that's what's coming to you. So when you have your apostles, angels, your mind will think about what's going to come from you but also what's going to come to you. And this is how you know you're in the spirit. Mm -hmm. The minute that this stops, mm -hmm. you know that a fallen angel has come. Mm -hmm. You know, now you know. Mm -hmm. The minute that it stops being honor, to be honored, honor, to be honored, 
honor to be honored. Once honor leaves, dishonor steps in. And that's when every other evil thing steps in as well. When God gives you an apostle, he's giving you a general that doesn't turn back even if he gets wounded. His message and his strategy remains established and it stabilizes you if you would take it. An apostle is a fierce leader of God's mysteries. A fierce leader of God's mysteries. So it's not just an impartation of God's knowledge but it is a vitality in the apostle. So what you catching out of this? Just speak whatever in your heart. First thing I saw um, when you said apostle, I'm thinking of the first letters in apostle as a post. Mm. And um, everything is built upon, everything is built on and built upon a post. Oh, that's good. And that's the apostle. Oh, that's so good. when the apostle, you connect with the apostle, and he gives you his angels. Like you say, he could be wounded, but he's still leading you. He's still moving. He gives you his angels to do the same thing that, that he does. Mm. So now we get into seed and harvest. So not only does the angel speak to you about the seed, what we mm. talked about last night, that causes the seed to speak and see. But now the harvest speaks too. And the harvest says, keep going. So there's a constant back and forth between oh. you and the apostle. He seeds, you receive harvest. You receive harvest and, and give him, you give him harvest and, and he receives the harvest and he gives you back seed. It, it's, it's a constant mm. back and forth, seed and harvest, seed and harvest, seed and harvest, seed and harvest. Mm. And what you were saying, once you, once you get distracted, once something happens, you listen to another source that's not the apostle, you, the, the interaction between the seed and the harvest stops. The, mm. the seed stops speaking, the harvest stops speaking, mm. and then now you're saying foolishness. Now you're speaking what fallen, fallen angels say. Well, you know, maybe, maybe I don't have to give this That's week. deep now. Yeah. So now you actually start translating the message right. of fallen angels. Right. Jesus said when they came back from casting out devils, I saw Satan fall like lightning. Mm -hmm. So what was Satan doing before he saw Satan fall like lightning? Satan was enthroned. Before he saw Satan fall like lightning, Satan was enthroned. If I see someone fall, that means that they wasn't always falling. They was posted up, stable. Is Satan stabilized when it comes to you? And my question is, how did you dethrone him? Hmm. Him, she. Hmm. How? Because they did not dethrone Satan until they obeyed Jesus. It was Jesus that said, I send you out. So when they go where they're sent, and they follow the instructions that he gave while they ascend. Satan falls when it pertains to their life because of their submission to their king on earth instructions. So we, this is the type of message you got to let marinate. Because if you speed past this, you're going to get excited and you're going to get all hype and you're not going to understand the weight of the mantle 
and the commission that's being handed to you easily. Mm -hmm. If Satan falls, that means that Satan wasn't always falling. Jesus just magnified when he did fall. But it was after they followed instructions. In Proverbs chapter 12, verse 1, it says that he that loveth instructions. Um, he that loveth instructions. Loveth wisdom or something like that. He that loveth instructions. Loveth. Let me see here. He that loveth instructions. He that loveth instruction loveth knowledge. Proverbs 12, 1. He that loveth instruction loveth knowledge, but he that hateth reproof is brutish. Mm -hmm. Another word for brutish is foolish. Mm -hmm. Another word for brutish is folly, wickedness. Brutish means arrogant. But it said that he that loveth instruction loveth knowledge. Mm -hmm. Knowledge, we can find that in Proverbs chapter 9. It says knowledge of the Holy One is a uh, I think that's Proverbs chapter 9, verse 6, I want to say. Well, no, nah, forsake the foolish and live. Forsake the foolish and go in the way of understanding. Oh, that's in verse 10. Proverbs 9, 10, it says, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Mm -hmm. The knowledge of the holy. So when we deal with knowledge... We're dealing with God giving you a lifestyle that you are now supposed to let come out of you. So when he said my people perish for lack of knowledge, he, he's saying not only they lacking information, but they're lacking the lifestyle that was supposed to come out of them. Now, that's very scary if we think about it, because that means that it's very well that you could be sick and you're really not supposed to be sick. But you're void of the lifestyle that's supposed to come out of you. It's possible that you're supposed to be rich, but you're not rich if you're void of the lifestyle that's supposed to come out of you. So, son, when Isaac came down in Genesis 26, God came down and gave Isaac that hundredfold. Could it be that that hundredfold was scheduled three years ago? Because God was so eager to get it to him that it took less than a year for God to give it. So God, it, it, it looked like that's a quick reaction. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you finally got it. So let me just. Right. Mm -hmm. Diligence is where you commit your loyalty to the knowledge of God. It's where you commit your energy, your activity to the knowledge of God. So whenever someone is in diligence, they're in a persuasion to get what God taught them into demonstration mode. Read that text that you had uh, yesterday. That Proverbs chapter 20. I mean, 20 yeah, before. yeah, 20. <clears throat> the slugger will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg and harvest and have nothing. What I want to take from that is. It says time of harvest. So every child of God has a time of harvest. And if you don't match that time, that harvest doesn't come to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Read it one more time, son. The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg and harvest and have nothing. It says beg in harvest. So there, just to, watch this here. We hear in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. Now this is a location. When you're in Christ, it means that you are in a place with God, the son of obedience, dominion, kingliness, victory, recovery, restoration, salvation, deliverance, blessing, riches, wealth, prosperity, abundance. So we hear the term in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. We hear it in Christ, in Christ. I'm in Christ, I'm in Christ, I'm in Christ. I mean, I'm born again. I'm in Christ, I mean, I'm free. I'm in Christ, I mean, I'm favored. I'm in Christ, I mean, I have the Holy Ghost. I'm in Christ, I mean, I got the word of God. In Christ, I mean, I got angels around me. In Christ, I mean, my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. This text say in harvest. So God intends to baptize. He intends to baptize you in harvest. What this text is saying, this man had a schedule in the heavens where God said, this is the time where I'm going to baptize you in harvest. And when God went, go check up on the man, the man did not qualify for the baptism. Yeah, no pigs. See? Yeah. See? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus looked at Israel and said, how I wish I could gather you all together. And he used chickens and hens and how the parent go gets the children and comfort them and bring them into his bosom. Now watch this. Why did Jesus make a reference? I wish I could gather you into my bosom because the bosom represent harvest. Mm. Mm. He's saying, I wish I could gather you to the location of my bosom because this is the location where my plan could come to you. I could take care of you. I could bless you. Money coming. Supernatural money moving. You living the best. Driving the best. Smelling the best. I wish I could gather you to the location where I'm free to do certain things for you because you're following my laws. So what you think about? It? What's on your heart? What's your focus? I think you spoke this years ago. The harvest, if you look at the words and break it down, it's a hard vest. When you were talking about Jesus gathering, wow. it's like a vest protects. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and it's hard so nothing can penetrate it. Mm -hmm. So even though you're in harvest and Satan is still attacked, when you're in harvest and Satan is attacking, nothing can, can penetrate that because he's gathered you to himself under mm -hmm. a hard vest. You're, you're in his harvest. Mm -hmm. He's the Lord, the owner of it. And now you've submitted to it and you've sold into it. And now I got you. Mm -hmm. Just to stay here, I got you. And that's why you were saying, Jesus, I wish I could do that. But see, you just won't follow my laws. You won't. You won't believe me. You won't have faith in me. You, you just keep wavering back and forth. And you know, you just brought up hard vests. And a vest, it, you don't pit a vest by your thigh mm -hmm. or your knee. You pit a vest by your chest. A bulletproof vest don't go by your head, it go by your chest. And so chess is the same place where Apostle Paul said that there is something called in Ephesians 6, the breastplate of righteousness. Mm -hmm. And then we see in Proverbs 8 that righteousness and riches are combined together. So when we deal with hard vests, God is saying, I'm combining the righteousness that you have learned and did 
with the riches that I always wanted to give to you. And now I am mingling. The, so watch this. It, it, it's combined. Now, what does the word of God say about um, uh, the harvest in Luke 6, 38? We just dealt with mingled together, combining righteousness and riches. He said, press down, shaking together. That's mingling. Mm -hmm. So when he said shaken together, now we go back to Haggai chapter two, verse six and on, where he said, I'm going to shake the heavens and the earth. That shaken together, it really, and then he started talking about how the silver and gold is mine. I'm going to give the glory of the latter house. Uh, the, for, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the glory of the former. And he's talking about all these things. I'm going to shake the dry lands. And he's talking about shaking, mingling things together. And then in, when he talks about the harvest in Luke 6, 38, he said it's going to be pressed down, shaken together, shaken together. Mm. So the shaken together realm is where God doesn't want you to miss one element of his riches, one element of his goodness. He don't want one particle of his provision to be void from you. We shake milkshake together because we want to taste the fullness of the milkshake. Mm. We shake drinks together. We shake sprays together because we want all of the potency of that spray to come out. So when God says that he going to shake it together, he's saying, daughter, there's certain things that your mama didn't have. That son, certain things your dad didn't have. I don't want one element of what I provide to miss you. Not one element. So when I'm in the harvest realm, I want to deal with your body parts that are old. Mm. I want to deal with your mindsets that are old. Mm. I want to deal with your emotional problems that's been old. I want to deal with your temperance that's old, your reactions that's old, your appetite that's old. Your desires that's old. So harvest is God attacking oldness. Mm. By supplying newness. Mm. Whoa. Mm. He's, he's attacking oldness. And giving newness. And now we know why the word of God says that um, newness of life. He comes to give newness of life. Mm -hmm. Newness of life means I don't want to see the continuation of curses. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see the continuations of problems and stress overriding you. I want to give you life and life more abundantly. So what did verse 2 say right there? Psalms, Psalms 102. Uh, 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Mm -hmm. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. Watch, watch that. Say that one more time. Verse 4. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Wait, wait, wait. Say that one more time. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. So what is really being destroyed? The Bible says the thief mm -hmm. cometh but to steal, kill, and destroy. So when he's saying I redeem, redeem means to take back, to repurchase, to, to, to take possession of, to own again. He's saying I come to get you out of all of the thief's activities against you. Everything that the thief has accomplished successfully against you, I come to buy you out of that. Redeem thy life. Now, thy life is the fullness of things that occur 
or is produced or happens to an individual. This type of life is all of the things that have transpired within your existence. He's saying, I come to redeem, take back everything that has happened to you, whether you knew it was from Satan or not. I come to take you out of that. And I come to change the verdict of destruction that the thief has declared over you. Redeem thy life from destruction. What he does next? Who crown of thee with loving kindness and tenderness. Wait, wait, wait. Why does he put a crown? Think about that. Mm. He puts a crown because the only way Satan could accomplish destruction is through ignorance. Mm -hmm. Arrogance. Ignorance, you don't, you don't know. Arrogance means that you block yourself from knowing. So God, watch, after he redeems your life from the thief, he crowns, he goes at your head. He goes at your thinking. He goes at your mindset and he pits an adornment of what? He crowneth thee with what? Loving kindness and tender mercies. Loving kindness is good treatment. Why is God crowning you with loving kindness and tender mercies? Why is he treating you like this? Because he wants you to have the right perception of his economy, his system, his kingdom, and who he is. And he wants you to recognize all of the pleasure that you've been looking for in Satan and lies and pride and arrogance and lust and greed and fear. Satan can't give it to you. I'm the one that got what you want. Mm -hmm. You looked at worldly people like, oh, I wish I had a nice car. Oh, I wish I could fly in that flight. He's saying, I'm the one that do that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to crown you after I take you out of the deception of the thief. Now watch this, son. The secret of the thief being able to destroy is that the thief was successfully able to deceive. Mm -hmm. So Satan got to deceive you before Satan could destroy you. So this destruction that has been happening in the child of God's life that God is redeeming them from, this is the moments where Satan tricked them, mm -hmm. gave them a false system. Mm -hmm. I heard the Lord said this to me, a false blood covenant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what the prophets of Baal was trying to exemplify. Mm -hmm. It was a false blood covenant. And so the thief has been lying. And that's why the thief was able to accomplish this destruction. Because the lie was believed by the one that God loves, the child of God, the, the one that has a future with God. Mm. And so once he redeems you from the thief's destruction, what the thief produced, destruction is the fruit of the thief. But deception is the mind of the thief see this a whole another uh, there's a whole another angle destruction is the fruit of the thief but deception is the mind of the thief so watch this since deception is the mind of the thief now you know why it says that he crowns thee because he go right to the mind so really people are underneath the thief because they really don't know that god is good Because if they knew God was good, the thief wouldn't be able to accomplish the deception in the mind, nor the destruction in the life. Mm. Mm. Wow. Mm. So watch, he crowned thee with loving kindness, the Lord of the harvest, and tender mercy, the Lord of the harvest. So watch this. He not only treats you good, but then he gives you another opportunity to become good. Mm -hmm. That's why the tender mercies is there. Mm -hmm. And why are the mercies tender? Because he not aggressively being merciful mm -hmm. to you. He not like, oh, uh, uh, here, here. He's tender. That means that he, he, he treats you with understanding. He treats you with compassion and patience. And he lets you shake the dust off and really walk in righteousness. Mm. So tender mercies means I'm not even going to be hostile or rough with you. 
I'm going to be real soft with you so that you can get this thing right and for you to learn the correct way of life and for you to demonstrate this correct way of life and for you to receive the rewards for this correct way of life. Mm. Now, what goes after that, son? Verse 5. Who satisfies thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Okay, your youth is your body. Your youth is your body mm. being renewed like the eagles. So why would God say that your body going to get renewed like the eagles? Because you're living good. Mm -hmm. He's satisfying your mouth with good things. That's wealth. Look, with good things, good things, things, things. He's giving you things. He's supplying you from the harvest power of God, the harvest power of God. And see now, watch, because he crowned you, he dealt with your mind. Now he has given you the helmet of salvation. That means that your mind is delivered from Satan's lies and trickery and false offers and false pathways and false promises and false pleasures. And now watch this here. Not only is your mind free from that, but now your mind is carrying a grace to have harvest consciousness. Because the loving kindness is making your mind think about his goodness, making your mind ponder his goodness. And so now even your mind has a harvest consciousness that my miracle is coming to me, not going past me. My money is coming to me, not going past me. My health is coming to me, not going past me. My liberty is coming to me, is not going past me. My favor is coming to me, not going past me. Let there be favor with God and with men in my life. Let there be multi-millionaire status in my life. Let there be money coming to me. Let there be miracle finances in my life. It's coming to me, not going past me. Because I have a harvest consciousness. When I have a harvest consciousness, Every good thing that God wants me to have, I will be satisfied with it. The thief doesn't have any place to deceive my mind or destroy my life. I'm redeemed. So now I can expect goodness and mercy following me and the blessing overtaking me. Goodness and mercy is following me and the blessing is overtaking me. I could have a harvest conscience. I receive a harvest consciousness. Say, say that one time, son. Say that one. I receive I, a harvest consciousness. You, you receive that harvest consciousness? I receive that harvest consciousness. That harvest consciousness. Mm -hmm. Now we working with the power that works in us. Mm -hmm. For God to do exceedingly. And abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Mm -hmm. Son, what you want to say on this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, that, that pretty much sums it up. The, the only thing, when you said head, I was thinking of, I don't know why, I just break it down. And when I break down the word head, is he adds. Yeah. So if the Lord is your head and the prophet is your head, he adds loving kindness, mercy. He, it. he satisfies your mouth. And so then if he's your head and he's adding, <laughs> he's adding, uh, <laughs> just, just the problems for having children. Yeah, I, I got you. <laughs> That's funny. Um, he adds to you, then, and he's your head, then you take on his head, you have the harvest consciousness, and that's the only way you can um, do exceedingly and abundantly above all. That's going to think. <laughs> head. And son, that's so powerful what you're saying because there's, there, there's going to be a constantly, there's going to be a constant addition mm -hmm. because when someone is in the headship authority of God, God is looking to shame the devil's defeat against them mm -hmm. to make you superior, mm -hmm. that they'll be visible. Now, someone's with me. He's seen... Uh, 
we see the people, of, you get to see the people faces when they look over. We've seen people walk around the, look around the car. He's seen that literally in the last 24, 48 hours. And the faces that people make. Because when you're in headship, you're able to now be the one embarrassing Satan's wishes mm -hmm. for your life. Mm -hmm. And now the wishes of God is prevailing against Satan's wishes. Mm -hmm.